When looking at a view application, we're really looking at a collection of view components. View Router gives us the tools we need to navigate between these components. If we generate a project with View CLI with View Router, it'll look something like this. Notice there are two links up at the top. These links are used to navigate between the components in the source views directory called home.view and about.view. When I click the about link, View Router loads up my about component. And when I click home, View Router loads up the home component. This kind of routing is called client-side routing, and it's different than the older and more traditional kind of routing called server-side routing. By understanding the differences between the two, we can build highly dynamic user interfaces. With a traditional server-side routed app, if a user types in a URL, the browser requests the URL from the server, and the server returns the page. If the user were to click a link on that page, the browser would request that URL and return the new page, refreshing on every page load. On the other hand, client-side routing looks a bit different. When the user types in the URL, the browser is going to request that URL, and in this case, the server returns that page, specifically index.html, which we'll touch on in just a minute, and it sends along with it the rest of the app. Since the app already has all the code that it needs within the browser, when navigation happens, Vue, with the help of Vue Router, compares and renders the differences without ever having to reload the page. We can also visualize the differences between these two kinds of routing, like so. In a traditional app that is not using client-side routing, the browser is essentially going out and fetching the different content that we need from those different URLs. On the other hand, within a single page application, we're really only looking at one page, the index.html. And as we click around in it, we're adjusting which view we're seeing of that app. Hence, we call it a single page application because all of these pages come from that one index.html page. In the remainder of this video, we'll use Vue CLI to create a new project with Vue Router. We'll then walk through the code which is generated to gain a greater understanding. We'll take a glimpse at some of the most powerful features of Vue Router, and I'll show you where to continue learning. There are a few ways to add Vue Router to a Vue project. We're going to start by using the Vue CLI, and I encourage you to follow along. First, I'll create a new Vue project by running Vue Create Demo. I'll select Manually Select Features, hit the spacebar to select the router, and then hit Return. I'll choose View 3. I do want to use History Mode, so I'll hit Enter. We'll use the default linter. We want lint on save, so I'll hit return. Dedicated config files are fine, so I'll hit return. And then I'll hit no for saving this as a preset. This is going to go create our project, run npm install, and now we can go into our demo directory and run our server. Great. This brings up a screen we've seen once before. Notice the two links on top. This is where we navigate between our home and our about components. So when we click on the about link, View Router loads up the about component. And when I click home, View Router loads up the home component. Now I'm going to hand you over to Adam Jar, another instructor at View Mastery, to dive into the code. If we take a look at the project that was generated for us by the Vue CLI, we can examine the index.html file. It's in the public directory, and on line 14 is this div with the ID of app. This will start to make more sense if we look inside the main.js file. Inside of here, our app component, which is the root component of our entire application, is being imported and used to create the app. It is then mounted to that div with the ID of app inside the index.html file. So again, our entire application lives at that single page, index.html. Also in this file, we're importing the router, and when we create the app, we're telling our app to use the router. So let's take a look at the router file to understand how it's all configured. Inside the router directory, it has this index.js file, and you'll notice at the bottom we're exporting router. Just above here, we're creating the router, and notice how we have this history property. When we created our project with the Vue CLI, we selected to use history mode. That's why we're seeing this property here. Also here, we're passing in the routes. 
So let's take a look at these. As you can see, we have a routes array with two route objects within it. Although they look a bit differently, which I'll touch on in just a second, notice how they each have a path, which is the URL for this route, along with a name and a property to specify the component to load when we reach this route. As you can see, we're importing the home component from our views directory. The views directory is where we put all those components that we want view router to be able to load up as we navigate between the different pages. In this case, we have the home and about pages, each with their own route. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the router is configured, let's look at how that site navigation is actually triggered. Notice here in the template, there are these router links along with a router view component. These are built-in components provided to us by View Router. When a user clicks on this home link, they're actually clicking on this router link here, which has a to attribute specifying the path that we want to navigate to. And when we navigate to that path, because of this route object here, View Router knows which component to load up. In this case, we're loading up the home component, but where do we put it? That's where the router view comes in. This functions as a placeholder that is replaced by the route's actual component. If we take another look at the router's index file, we'll notice that create router and create web history are being imported from view router. And opening up the package JSON, there it is within our dependencies. Because we selected view router when we created the project with the view CLI, that's why we're seeing it here added to the dependencies. This tells our project to use the latest version of view router compatible with this version number, in my case, 4.0.0-0. Your version number may be a bit different. If you're following along, now might be a great time to pause and play around. You might try creating a new component in the source views directory, like a contact component. Then create a new route inside the router and finally, link to the new route inside the app.view. So your navigation might end up looking like this. View Router has a lot of useful features for building view applications. You can create and receive parameters, like when you do pagination. It has dynamic routes to navigate to a product with the ID of 1234, or maybe view the user profile page for Greg. You can also nest routes, like if I wanted to read the reviews for this product. I can redirect or abort navigation, like when an API call fails and I need to show an error page. Or I can create navigation guards to prevent unauthorized people from accessing a page. We're obviously scratching the surface here. If you want to learn more about View Router, I recommend taking a read through the View Router documentation. Or if you like watching animated videos like this one, check out my touring View Router course on View Mastery. Thanks for watching.